In an ever-increasingly complex world, the importance of protecting and maintaining Mother Nature's delicate systems and our planet's general well-being is vital. One of the more interesting organisms in the ocean are the glass sponges of Howe Sound, British Columbia. Located in the southernmost fjord of Canada, these are the only sponges within the depth limits of recreational divers. Many of the sponge gardens and bioherms can be found starting at 30 meters underwater. The sponges play a critical role as filter feeders and are able to clean a massive volume of pollutants from the water. Their role as habitat is essential for the health of fish stocks to recover and proliferate. Given their delicate nature, any interference from fishermen's nets or traps will destroy them. They desperately need official protections. Sponges can be divided into two groups, one being considered garden and the other is defined as bioherm. A sponge garden is characterized by sponges growing on a rocky or steep substrate. Bioherms are used in the case of new sponges growing on top of old dead sponges. The rigid nature of the old dead sponges provide a structure for the new sponges to build upon. In Hecate Strait, a bioherm has been measured to be 18 meters deep. These mounds can be 9,000 to 10,000 years old. And I am standing right now over the Lion's Bay Seamount, and I'm here in Howe Sound, and I am about to explore the glass sponges. So you're probably one of the only divers or people on Earth who's ever been in the water and seen one of these sponges. Well, I think it probably wouldn't be bragging if I said that our dive team has actually spent more personal time inside a bioherm than anybody else on the planet. I find it so amazing that here we are, you know, a few minutes away from a really bustling city and we're sitting a couple hundred feet above a really unique ecosystem and yet nobody knows about it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, House Sound is just around the corner from West Vancouver um, in we have a huge city over there. So do you find that every time you go down, you notice something different? Or does it always seem kind of the same? You know, you see the same organisms? I think there's something different every time that we go down there. We've seen uh, octopus on sponge. Really? Uh, uh, baby rockfish by the thousands. Uh, all kinds of different animals in the uh, glass sponge bioherms. So what would an octopus be doing down there? That's a good question. <laughs> You know, there's not a lot known about sponge bioherms in the actual environment itself, so uh, this is all new studies. Mm -hmm. How old are these sponges? Well, the sponge growth rate is about 2 to 10 centimeters per year. The actual bioherm itself will date back to the last glaciation period in Howe Sound, which is roughly about 15,000 years ago. And the sea levels were uh, a lot less then. They, uh, they could have been up to um, 420 feet uh, shallower than they are right now. Hmm. So there may be uh, remnants of old dead bioherms even deeper than, than what we're looking at this point. As we've positioned ourselves over top of the deep bioherm now using our 3D mapping system. And what we're gonna do is drop the uh, deep drop camera down onto the uh, bioherm, which is over 230 feet down below us right now. That's the top of the seamount and it goes down from there. I don't see much. See bubbles, but it is pretty deep. It's about 240 feet here. So the sponges are going to be at the very bottom, I'm assuming. Yep. So we're going to let these, this go all the way. Let her out. Yep. So when you say watch for the bottom. Yeah, you'll see it, it'll start to come up faintly and then all of a sudden whoosh, right in the sponge. 20 feet. Yeah. I feel like I'm right there. Nope. No, you'll see them. They'll brighten right up here when you get into them. So how did you know we were right above the glass sponges? Have you well, got a mark? What we're doing is there's the boat and there's the custom 3D map. Ah, so you know, on the top of it. So if we throw this in the 3D, you have to see what's going on there. You have to watch the question. So there we are right there. Hmm. And th these are all the maps that you created. Yeah. yeah. There's where the, Amazing. There's the, where the camera is right now. There's where we dropped the diver. So we're coming down to the other side. Okay. And this will be dropping off. 
you have to put it on a little bit more um, cable, yeah. you can go right down on top of these. I don't want to break them, so I'm No, you're so, so technical up there. Okay, oh, yeah. Hey, wow, look at that. I didn't know they were that shape. So you, I think you mentioned before when we were looking at the video, but if you were to put your arm down, how, how deep would it sink? Well, with the ones over in, uh, in Hal Sound, um, it'll go beyond the length of your arm. You can actually slide it very easily into what feels like a, kind of a, a greasy mud. Uh, <laughs> and it goes right up your elbow. <laughs> and you come out, and it's all dirty. You have to kind of wipe it off. Right. You do it in an area where there's no living sponge, but in the bioherm to, to actually test that. And that is one of the actual tests of, that it is a bioherm. Oh, I see. So in an area where we are right now, how many bioherms do you estimate would be around here? Well, we're actually still discovering new bioherms, uh, even up to this date. Um, we have about uh, nine of them that we know of, hmm. uh, four of them that we can actually scuba dive into. And uh, out of that uh, nine, I think it was about seven or eight our teams actually discovered. Wow, and how big of an area are we talking then? Uh, they range from, um, say uh, probably uh, 50 meters across to um, some of the large ones will be uh, 200 meters across. 200 meters, that's a pretty vast space. Yeah, they're, they're fairly big wow. and uh, you don't get to see them all in one dive. <laughs> so they, they, I mean a huge 200 meters squared, you were saying, that would filter a ton of water. It filters a lot of water. The uh, sponge itself uh, filters uh, roughly 900 uh, times its uh, body volume per hour. Wow. And on the uh, larger reefs, like in the uh, uh, Galliano Ridge, uh, it's been estimated that they're filtering something like 90,000 liters per second. Unbelievable. So it sounds like we know a little bit about their biology and their life cycle and all that, but is there more to be known? I mean, it sounds like there's still a lot of questions. Yeah, there's a lot to be, a lot to be learned and there's a lot of research still going on uh, about sponge. Using the tidal action to slowly drift over the sponges, Glenn and his daughter Kelsey are able to glide over the bottom and pull up the camera when necessary to avoid the delicate glass sponges. Are you ever dropping oh, so far down? Oh, no, no Kelsey's, actually, Kelsey's actually on the other end of the wire here and she's watching <laughs> and you, the monitor on and board. And you're doing a good job. ROVs often damage the sponges as they travel quickly and can't maneuver fast enough to avoid vertical sponge outcroppings. The drop camera is very basic in design, yet very superior as a non-invasive way of studying the delicate sponges. Currently, the government has afforded protections to a large glass sponge reef in Hecate Strait. And even the commercial prawn fishers have agreed to leave these critically needed marine sanctuaries alone. Nine other areas in Georgia Strait are currently being discussed to see if protections can be implemented. Fisheries and Oceans Canada Several philanthropic organizations, the prawn, crab, and sports fishermen are all working together to create these protections. Unfortunately, the sponges of Howe Sound are not part of this negotiation. Although, BC Parks is currently working towards protecting the glass sponge bioherm at Helcott Marine Park off Gambier Island. Hopefully, the other areas in Howe Sound will also be added for protection. Groups like the Marine Life Sanctuary Society, Canadian Marine Environment Protection Society, and the Underwater Council of BC are working towards creating these protections. Canadians from across Canada are encouraged to join these organizations to help preserve these spectacular organisms.